my voice is like cracking up here. Hey guys, we are live. <laughs> Don't you wish you could control your sick guy cool voice? Like, yeah. you use that when you wanted to, not just because you've got like terrible illness. No, I mean, look, um, welcome to the final episode of the weekly, and we are doing the best tech of 2018. So, there are no topics. Uh, we have a couple of things to talk about, of course. There's a lot of tech. A lot of tech news we had this year. Uh, and of course, our usual host of characters starting off with Mr. Warren Bowman. How you doing, Matt? Uh, good. Sick. Uh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel I feel you, man. I feel you. I feel the same way. And of course, Mr. Juan Magnell from Some Gadget Guy. How's he going, man? So I got my fever, flu, and sinus infection out of the way a couple of days ago. So I feel like I'm going to be the animated, upbeat one while y'all are sniffling in front of your awesome podcasting mics from the whole show. Well, well, I mean, you know, um, you know, Sam might beat you to that. What's up, Sam? How you doing? Yeah, we could be chipper. Oh, we'll be the chipper. I'm doing we'll good. Let them be all, all like uh, dragon. Sorry, Sam, you said, you know, as you know, immediately Juan already cut you off. I mean, things are starting hard already. It's already started, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, haven't been sick for any, for, for, like, I can't remember ever being sick around Christmas. So I've been, I'm, I've been lucky so far. So I'm doing good. No need for any cold, nothing. I'm, uh, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm sick. Sick. I, I just came back from Dallas, and it is colder in Dallas than it is in New York. It was high of 37 degrees in Dallas, so it was cold. Dude, and, I just came back from Houston. It's not like we're going back and forth in different places. Houston was nice. It wasn't like it was like boiling hot or something. No, Stop no, making no. excuses for the weather, man. I mean, for your sickness. You got sick. You got weak white blood cells, man. Train those white guys. I, I lightly stepped on Sam, and now Sam is like raising everyone. Uh, to the ground. Uh, yeah, you know, I just muted Sam, so take that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just gonna add that, like today we we had a high of sixty degrees, so I, I had to I had to break out a hoodie because it's pretty cold here in LA. Shut up, Juan. You know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, so we have. <laughs> We have a, a show for you where we'll be talking about some of the things that we liked this year, things we didn't like as well, and some of the tech news, some of the best tech news that we had this year in 20, because there's a lot of stuff. Thank you, everyone, for chiming in. I know you guys have been asking about the show, um, and I am going to say that this will be the last show for a while, um, just because we want to look at things and retool and also to be honest it just hasn't been doing well in the numbers so you know we see if we might actually just take this as a podcast only or it might be a pre-recorded show but you know what leave your thoughts i know some of you might be pissed so let us know what you think about that uh also there is a giveaway uh multiple giveaways uh we're giving a couple things first off we are giving away a poco phone f1 uh hey, hey. Yep, right here. So you could win that. Um, there's also an Overwatch uh, edition gaming headset here from Razer, which is nice. And we are giving not one, not two, not three, not four, but five, five $20 Amazon gift cards. So, so if I'm looking at the live chat right now, literally everyone who's in there right now should get something. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so, so you have it there. Um, we will randomly pick winners, you know, through and through. We might even ask a question or something, so we'll see. So let's start off uh, with just our general thoughts of the year. I'll start off with you, Sam. You know, I hopefully don't have anything harsh uh, to say to me besides the fact that, you know, you care about my health. But what did you think of 2018 as a whole? You know what? I'm not even going to talk about your weak white blood cells, man. Uh, 2018 was interesting. saving that the whole time uh, you had him muted. I know, right? 2018 was actually quite interesting. I, I think 2018 is the year um, when it came to tech that we all realized that a lot of legislature 
uh, or a lot of our legislation in tech is sim somewhat backwards. The people who we trust to make laws for us are old and don't understand the technology they're making laws um, regarding. Um, the, the biggest names in technology have turned out to be some of the greatest abusers of user uh, data. It's just really amazing from a social media and social engineering standpoint that 2018 was a monumental year for us to see how the social media is essentially failing the, the, the people who use it. Uh, from a hardware technology standpoint, there's been some really interesting tech out there. I think one of the things you're giving away to Poco Phone was really interesting. Um, we've seen uh, devices uh, die, like basically the essential phone. <laughs> um, we've seen, you know, Samsung, the, the, the regular names we expect. But for me, the standout is still the Note, uh, the Note 9. I think um, basically having the Note 9 and being able to compute on my device is an amazing thing. Uh, it's been, being able to dock my device and use it as a full, almost a full-fledged computer, it really helps me in my day-to-day. -day. So that's that's just my kicking it off. I'm sure there are other more interesting things that's come out, and we'll talk about it later. But um, right now, that's what I'm uh, going to kick off with. Wow, wow. Sam went for the juggler there, went against social media, you know, picked his favorite phone every year, which is a Galaxy Note series. And... Well, uh, and uh, he talked about, um, you know, how legislator is is old and decrepit. And I want to give a shout out to two people already. First off is Harish uh, Mukpakpet. Thank you for donating. Appreciate that, man. You know, bigs up to you. And of course, Fat Produce. Thank you. He says, Happy New Year, guys. You're my favorite podcast. And some people are saying we should just make it a podcast also. So, again, leave your thoughts, guys, because this is be the last show for a while so let us know what you think so now that sam has laid his cards on the table i'll go over to you mr warren bowman what did you make of 2018 i think it should come back to me just because you mentioned legislation and i can see one is already ready to <laughs> <laughs> let's okay. get his rant out of the way <laughs> all right all right let's go to, let's go to one then okay I, I i can go in next it, it I, i'm gonna follow a lot in sam's uh footsteps for the general trends i mean we're gonna get into some more specifics in individual devices and factors i'm sure but 2018 was a rough year it was a roller coaster ride there were some fun moments but ultimately i think this was confirmation for a lot of the things we've been discussing for several years now um, if you go back and you listen to some of the podcasts that we put out in 2016, we're we're still in a holding pattern. We, we've hit peak smartphone. We've hit peak mobile hardware. We're still waiting for those data and services to catch up to the supercomputers that live in our pockets. And, and we're still following some of the same disappointing trends where if you had a phone from 2016, and if it were still getting good software updates, it would probably still be a competitive device today with minimal, minimal uh, maintenance. And that's an upsetting trend amongst all the other conversations that we've been having about device longevity, device repairability, right to repair, and price tags that are now climbing north of $1,000 for pocket computers. These are all trends that I think made 2018 a very exhausting year uh, to cover this tech uh, it, for, for the beats that, that we cover. At the same time, I, I think we saw some interesting things happen where at the beginning of the year, there was a lot of frustration with like desktop and laptop hardware, uh, RAM prices. We, we're still seeing a lot of collusion politically on things like individual computer components, um, RAM especially, GPU pricing that got wildly out of control because of trends like crypto. But coming into the end of the year, all of that kind of cratered and those of us who really care just about that price performance, making a new system, building a new PC, getting back to basics or trying to create something that we can use to make stuff with. Um, 2018 wrapped on actually a pretty decent note. I mean, like, I feel like we, we've come back to some sanity in the desktop and laptop markets for a lot of us. Um, the political the political side of this is, I think, going to be the what 2018 is remembered for is uh, the number of times that media organizations, uh, news media, social media, and politicians basically on all fronts let us down as citizens and consumers, where we had opportunities to question people that were in charge of these mega corporations like Facebook, Google, Apple, etc. And the people that we've elected to represent us didn't do so 
with distinction. In fact, largely let us down in their ability to handle and grasp the problems facing us today. We saw politics completely co-opted um, for things like regulatory action and consumer protections. And uh, we're, we're going to have to have a reckoning, I think, throughout next th this next year. Um, we're going to have to have a reckoning with how much control a handful of companies can have over our media, the dissemination of information, publication, et cetera. And, uh, you know, for, for as much as I'm, I'm going to be, I, I'm, this is the right time of year. We're, we're all kind of feeling like, you know, this is going to be a fresh start or a change or what we can look forward to. Um, I, I feel like 2019, we've got some some very steep and grown up challenges ahead of us, but hopefully we can start to untangle some of the issues that we directly faced this year. And that's going to be an ongoing conversation that we have to have uh, over this next uh, near term piece of time. So I, I, for, on that note, in, in the spirit of sharing and giving, <laughs> let me pass off before I soapbox anymore. And we can. Yeah, I uh, mean, and, uh, kind of, I mean, to be, kind of to be honest, it. Juan, I um, I kind of forgot what you were talking about. Kind of lost me there for a second. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> the that we produce. So these topics would probably be foreign to you. So. Oh, wow. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> dropped a megapixel on you. Megapixel yeah. on you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, and also merch. Uh, yes. So there you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no. I mean, you are right, though, especially on the on, on the way that we've been let down by, you know, the the powers that we've hurled, held up for, you know, the, you know, at least the last decade or so, whether it's media, social media companies, um, as also as well as the you know House and Senate and you know the government itself. Uh, Warren, how about you? Where do you stand with 2018? I think in 2018 for uh, tech, I think you have to look at it in, in also in a few different ways. Um, and as far as policy goes, uh, I think Juan and uh, Sam covered most of those things. In sort of uh, talking about how legislation has let us down, where. You know, people just know that the internet is a series of tubes that we have in Congress mm -hmm. and will politely tell you to print me the internet whenever possible because they have no idea how the internet actually works. So there is a lot of growing to do and there needs to be a lot of people that are younger in Congress or working with members of Congress to give them a better understanding of how the internet works. Um, I think we learned a, a lot about the, the, the misuse of data this year in many, many different ways and how social media hasn't worked for us in the way that we would like it to. But it also kind of hints to us that we should probably be paying attention, paying more attention to these services and free services we sign up for, because it says it in there what they're going to do with any information that you give them. So you need to kind of have a little bit more of a keen eye on a lot of those things and holding these companies accountable for when these things are not just Facebook, because it seems like Facebook was the one that was getting nailed with everything while there are plenty of other tech companies who have had free reign over this. This, in, this includes the Amazons and the Apples and all of them of the world to be able to do whatever they want to do because they lobby the hell out of it to let them do what they want to do. So it's not just Facebook in that case. So you need to really hold a few other companies more accountable. Speaking of that, we need to hold Amazon, on, I think honestly, uh, to a bit of a higher standard as well too, because this is a company that while I do like I do like shopping on Amazon, I do like shopping online there, they are running a model that could potentially destroy many other companies because a lot of times they run a thing where if, if, if they can't buy you, they just beat you down with their size. And that's something we really need to be uh, very, very uh, paid a lot of attention to because I've noticed that if I buy something that I really do like, if something is a popular item, there tends to be now this Amazon version of it that will pop up as an alternative. And they usually do that to try to, because maybe a company has, they hasn't decided to be bought out by them or they just want to be their own thing. And so instead of doing that, they'll just beat you down with their pricing and their aggressive marketing to try and force you into that. So a diaper company fell into this space. I forgot what their names were, um, they, but there was a diaper company that uh, that's a good example of, they did not want to be bought by Amazon and Amazon essentially aggressively priced the diapers so low to pretty much force them to buy out. And then Amazon raised those prices back up once again, because that's kind of the strategy they want to pull is to be the essentially the main retailer in the game and dictate pricing to finally 
make that profit. They're playing a long tail game to make obscene profit towards the end of this whole thing. And I think we need to look at managing those companies and really watching these things. In my view, if Microsoft could be broken up this way, I think there needs to be a case where a lot of these other companies may also need to be broken up in very similar ways as well, too, to to avoid oligopoly or it, and such that's kind of happening in this space. Uh, as far as phones are concerned, boring. I'm just going to put it out there. It was boring and we overhype it. We do all in the tech community. We overhype what's, what, we, what we try to say is good. What we, and, and not that these phones are bad, but we, we don't ask for more. And we just get these incremental updates. And this is across the board out of, out of pretty much everyone, but maybe one exception. It, 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 I will give credit, surprisingly, to Apple because the X, XS Max is at least a leap in a direction that they normally wouldn't have gone in in offering a big screen OLED phone, which is not something I was going to expect them to do. I really expect them to kind of cheapen their way out of it or kind of keep the same thing that they're going. I'll give them credit on that. Not saying that they haven't put out the same thing all the time or the specs or everything is much better than what they are, but I do give them credit on a space of at least probably the only company I think tweakly thought out of their own personal box while everyone else has been kind of doing sort of the same things over and over again. And it's got to be more than just cameras that we approve with phones because we've now gone to this space again where hardware is caught up, the, the software isn't improving. So now we need to go back to where the software goes forward and pushes the boundaries of what this hardware can do. It seems like Samsung is one of the companies, especially when we saw with their one OS, I forgot the name. I don't know if that's one the official name. One UI, which I'm pretty sure they'll have a different name for it. But no, their, that's the official name. The official name? Yeah. I don't know how. I, that doesn't sound like good marketing. This is my opinion. I'm just... I think of marketing and I think they would spin it some different way. But it's good that at least they're trying to push things a little bit differently. We'll see how that sort of rolls out. But that's like, if you think about it, we didn't get anything really majorly different from the software front other than an extremely annoying Android 9 user interface outside of like anything else. So I would like to really see a lot of those things improve more so going into the future as well. So I think we've done the last, honestly, the last two years of kind of steadying fast and just kind of being in this little pond and no one's really tried to drop something heavy and really shake things up. So I'm hoping in 2019 and especially going into 2020 that we really start to see some serious shakeup going on because the market in smartphones is saturated. Phones are lasting longer. People are getting wiser to these things and holding on to things longer or staying in an upgrade path that might be even a year behind what the latest phone is because they know they can get it at a cheaper price. Than, than they would for the latest and greatest and know they're not missing a whole lot with it. People are a whole lot smarter now about these things. So I'd like to see them really make some jumps and some leaps and really give us true mobile computing on a phone. So all right, that's all right. my piece. All right, Warren has stated his piece. And I would say I disagree with none of everything that you people have said. I know that didn't come out right. <laughs> That, that sentence was too clever by two, by two. Yes, friend. exactly. I know a Sam sounds like was that a double negative? Or? Yeah, yeah, it was a double negative or positive. Yeah, there we go. But no, I mean, uh, like, even in the live chat, too, I think Warren, that, that's the perfect word for 2018 when it comes to this kind of mobile tech is we all look for things to be excited about. And the reason why we do these shows is because we want to see progress. We want to see companies pushing boundaries and 2018 across the board ultimately was a pretty boring year I, I like when when the company that i think is like when when one plus i think delivers one of the most important phone updates of the year and it really doesn't have much to do with the phone it has more to do with their business relationships is what made that move so exciting we're not in a golden age of smartphones we're at peak smartphone and i think we're going to start seeing the, the the day crescendo the most um, exciting phone the, the most exciting phone the last two years should not be coming from a company named after a fruit who just really got out got their head out of the room butts and when see, they made that I, see see now this is where i disagree i i what I, what, the, what the, phone the iPhone, has generated what phone outside of the iphone 10 in the last two years has generated the same amount of buzz and has generated this, uh, that that level of excitement poco phone yeah 
Okay, let me go down the street and ask if somebody knows what a poker phone is. No, I'm not, look, I, I don't look at it as an American it's, thing it's anymore. It's not about that, you said about head. Head. No, 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 you said butt. No, I, I would you say said, the poker phone butt. did generate a lot of buzz among <laughs> people who knew about it. Yeah, but here's the here's the yeah thing, because though. marketed it, they they went and they did a heavy marketing for it, but that's not on the same. That, no, but but let me, that's not it. Be, before we even get into all that, I haven't even said it. To me, this year, this is the year of the Chinese manufacturer. Yeah. We we forgot about that. This is the year. This phone, Huawei, Xiaomi, um, Oppo, not this is the year the Chinese manufacturer said we know how to make devices and deliver. You know, previous years we've had one or two companies come up. OnePlus has always been there, right, in the mix. But this is the year where Oppo gave us a phone without a bezel and without a notch, you know, completely. Same thing with um, Xiaomi. They gave us a phone with the Mi Mix 3, which is out now, that is $450 and has all these features. Um, granted, yes, I agree. It has been a dull year for innovation on smartphones. But, of course, we also know this is a mature market. But I, I, I like the fact that, yes, these Chinese manufacturers have actually come out and delivered devices that across the board will compete with anyone heavily. We've seen the decline of HTC this year to almost dead. They we've, seen it. we've seen LG they get into the markets to compete. And that's not something that they have been able to change. To me, I, I, get, I get when they're doing these things and they're making it exciting and I get that whole thing. But if it can't get to the masses in the way you're that talking the other about phones American out there. masses again. Huawei sold 200 million phones, and not a sniff in this market other than Amazon. And they are now officially number two combined. There was number two internationally. Now they've they're now the full number two worldwide. That just shows you how that market and those manufacturers have matured. I get it. I get it. The American market is always important. Yeah, but, but it also shows where the development of those markets are. Look at Xiaomi devices. It's not in America, but look at how mature those devices are. But when, you, when you're using Huawei as an example, they've also got the benefit of somewhat being in the U.S. market for the little time that they were and spending five years of maturity to get to that point. Who else has gotten that opportunity? Of it? I'm just talking about the devices. If you look at Xiaomi devices, you, you tell me that it's less than anything else. Oh no, it's not less than anything yeah. else. It's so just that's why that. I said it's to me, I consider it the year of the Chinese manufacturer because they've all come out. I mean, uh, I mean, you said yeah, the iPhone. To me, the, the most innovative device is the Oppo phone. You know, everybody's talking about no bezels. These are the, the American companies. Apple is the one talking about taking out bezels. You know, people are talking about taking about notches. Oppo is the one that gave us a device that truly has not. They truly gave us a device. What people were talking about, they delivered it. Well, Granted, we can also, yeah, we but, can also look at some of the other trends too. I mean, look at governments around the world sort of conflating the security dangers of network and infrastructure with the consumer sales divisions of companies like Huawei and DTE. I, I, I agree in the, the sort of more general sense with Enabong that this was the year that China really threw some muscle around and it's making other markets nervous for their ability to put out competitive high quality equipment that consumers are going to like if they get their hands on in addition to this sort of securities boogeyman um, as to who gets to control the future iterations and the backbone hardware of the next iterations of wireless and telecommunications equipment. Um, but, but that's also what makes 2018 a difficult year to sum up from a singular device situation. I totally see what you're saying, Warren, like, being able to move Apple into this iPhone XS, XS Max, XR era of iPhone was a significant move for that company. And they're, you know, the number two seller here in the United States. They're, they're a remarkable force worldwide. But I think as an overall trend, when we look at every developing market, when we look at all of the LTE that's lighting up around the world and all of the 3G that's being abandoned, <coughs> China is exerting way more influence over way more markets with way more handsets um, than I think Apple has been able to manifest with a phone design that's already starting to underperform based on the company's expectations. And that became a major talking point. That was actually something that I wanted to talk about this year was for Apple still being one of the most profitable companies on the planet. They reached that trillion dollar market cap. They had a huge market correction over these last couple months. Um, 
would we say that this was a successful year for Apple or are we going to or, or do we feel more like where the analysts are, that this was a challenging year for Apple and that now, you know, investors are starting to feel a little bit of pressure, of how much money is coming out of iOS? You know, we saw the, uh, the, the, the continued press towards trying to get more consumers on iPads instead of laptops. You know, we know where Apple is making their money. We know where Apple is generating income, not only from the, the hardware, but from app sales. Is this a successful strategy? Did we think Apple really, really met that change that they're, they're facing the future? Or do we think that this is the last gasp of trying to extract value out of this current setup? I mean, it's a very interesting year for Apple coming into 2019, not even 2018. I think 2018, they were fine, but they made a bunch of changes by one, not reporting... They said they're not going to report iPhone sales. I mean, they changed it from unit sales. individual units. Unit now, sales. they just don't report anything at all, you know, for iPhone sales, which is very interesting. And also the fact that, you know, I, I saw this two days ago and somebody bought an article, I just can't remember who, but, you know, Apple was having a trading sale for the iPhone, um, which one again? The XR, basically, which is something they don't do that often. It is very rare, and they're doing that. And I think also offered it on the X as well. I'm not sure if it, if it was the Max. And I'm going because I oh, literally the ad I saw from Apple was get an iPhone XR for 400 bucks. I was like, yeah. what? Then I clicked it. No, it was I, a I tweeted that and, because it, yeah. it was a BS gimmick that Apple used to be above. Yes, they didn't used to play games like that. Yeah, where it's that's like, how oh, you know well. that they they know they in, in the situation. And again, if you, if you go back to that. Like you mentioned, the laptops and iPads where on their press conference, they said we have the, the best, the highest selling uh, computing device out there. And they put iPad sales and they put Dell and the rest of them all around. Basically saying, first of all, our MacBooks are dead. Or at least they just don't count in sales for us to even care. I mean, that's what they said. It wasn't me. From well, the consumer laptops in general have, have kind of come down in terms of how consistently so that's like an every three year market. No, no. Yeah, and it, it is. is. And, and, and they if you look, if you look at the, the graph, right? right? If you look at the graph, right. Dell wasn't that far off. You can buy it with HP, it completely smokes it. So it's almost like saying, again, yeah. well, but, I, I'm pretty sure that's combining uh, consumer and business sales with that. No, how much business sales do they make in iPads? Oh, no, they don't. Uh, oh, no, they do. No, 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 they make no, no. a lot of startups. A significant yeah. amount in iPad sales in terms of business prospects with that. They definitely do. But in terms of their laptops against the competition from a business, to hell no. They're, they're yeah, not in that space. But I'm, what I'm to think Dell and HP are putting their pro – those are probably their numbers together. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, they put whatever numbers they felt will reflect – worse on those guys. It doesn't matter. It's it's the I'm using the graph that Apple showed up. To me, point all those things point to a very interesting 2019 for Apple is that yes, the faithful will still be there, but as a company, where you know basically even said in their in their earnings is like we, we're moving in, you know, they want people to look at services. That's what they wanted they, you know, yeah. what and, and very Microsoft the same word. <laughs> very much that, 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 that takes it back to exactly you know, what the real issue with the industry is right now, a focus on services, right? A focus on basically consumer data, a focus on delivering um, delivering value, not for the consumer, but rather for people who need the consumer data to advertise. Uh, I think we had this conversation uh, not too long ago where I pointed out basically Amazon 1996, uh, Google, 1998, yeah, yeah, right. Facebook, 2004, Twitter, 2006, the iPhone came out in 2007. What has happened in the last 11 years that has really caught our attention? These companies have all decided that they would buy anything that is new or relevant and basically fold it into the, themselves. So we have not had anything significant in the last decade come out this is like there's been a decade long dry spell of innovation. You uh, you talking about in terms of service or in, in terms, terms of hardware? In terms of hardware. In terms well, of hardware or service? Yeah. And no, no services. No services. We've had a lot of changes. Yeah. Hardware, innovative hardware, or innovative just new ideas. So it's 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 it, these companies, or should I say, the industry, have now created a problem that it will be very difficult to get out of because we've created these big monoliths that anything that comes out that even has an iota of succeeding and taking away consumers from their platforms 
will be bought, absorbed, and ultimately destroyed. But that mostly hasn't been hardware. That's been software-driven stuff that they and services-driven stuff that they that they that they buy out on. Because and then if that's the case, we've had we've had innovations with that. I mean, WhatsApp and Instagram are probably the what, two biggest things. WhatsApp and Instagram, the two biggest things that have been what bought by Facebook. WhatsApp yeah. and Instagram are both owned by Facebook. Oh, people yeah. People say they're going to delete Facebook, but they still use WhatsApp <laughs> and Instagram. Yeah, but that's because so, people don't understand what, that. What, what I'm saying is still, still, still holds. What I'm saying still holds relevance. Any new idea that comes out in the last decade has been bought over, absorbed, and in some cases, just basically phased out. Take any major idea. Take even oh, yeah. 3D. Some people say, oh, yeah, but 3D came out. 3D. Oculus was bought by Facebook. So, yeah, but, but Sam, but that goes back. That goes back to my original point in the very beginning. Oh, the exactly. Second. Exactly. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push pause here real quick because I see another face down at the bottom that I feel we Ooh. should acknowledge, guys. <laughs> uh, Joshua Magara here has joined us. Thank you very much for joining, Joshua. Hey, um, thanks for having me. And you're going to, granted, he's using he's using a Chinese manufacturer device here. This is the Mate X Pro because I know that camera angle anywhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thank you for joining. We've we've had this heated discussion where. Honestly, though, guys, I was hoping we would talk more about positives about 2018. <laughs> no, actually, and, and no, Josh is the per perfect guy for this because I feel like if anyone can help us with some upbeat recollections, some of, some of the things that he found most exciting about 2018, I think he can jump into this and tell us why it didn't come from Apple. Oh, I don't... <laughs> wait, 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 now, now, before you continue, just to give you just some background, that we've talked about you know hardware, software, news. Uh, that have, have affected us this year, you okay. know, ranging topics from Facebook to uh, judicial hearings and devices and all that kind of stuff. So for you, um, I, I, you know, where does 2018, what, what was the year summary for you? Just because uh, it'd be interesting to hear. Um, focusing or not focusing on my career change. <laughs> I love how Josh is like, fuck everything, man. It's my, my life. <laughs> no, this was another 2018 was a good existential crisis year for YouTubers, definitely. <laughs> yeah, uh, for yeah. sure. I mean, this, I, learned, this is more... I learned about burnout. I learned about where I want to be in my career and oh, oh, change in the middle of the year. Like, yeah, there's a lot, there's a big learning experience with 2018. <laughs> well, well, this this one is more on tech, on tech, yeah, yeah. tech devices, and of course, tech use. Um, honestly, I, I would say that, uh, despite all of the craziness that's happening with uh, Chinese manufacturers and how they're just like this easy target, I have to say there's some great freaking products coming out of China. And I think everyone needs to sort of, every, everyone just sort of needs to pull back a little bit and realize that good stuff is coming from China. So maybe let's, let's not, let's not get too, uh, wrapped up in the politics of everything and just enjoy the products because let's put it this way if we're that mad that china might be might be uh, uh uh collecting and using our data facebook did it and we talked about it at the beginning of the year but no one seems to forget it. no one seems to remember that stuff so like you know we, it happens at home just as much as it happens abroad so we, we need to pick our battles in a way so i'm using one awesome product i finally upgraded my laptop by moving to the matebook x pro i'm happy with that literally everybody in youtube is pretty damn happy with the mate 20 pro so what's the problem right now like Let's prove the problems. Let's prove what people are claiming before we get some out of the products themselves. And the products themselves are pretty great. So that's that's, that's my whole thing, at least based upon what you were saying when I first came in. <laughs> um, but I have to say probably my favorite thing from this year has to be, um, gosh, what would be one really like awesome thing? Um, man, just... I have to say that the, this year has been so high high quality. There's so many good products that have come out. There are reasons not to like certain ones, but just the level of tech we have in 2018 has been uh, has been pretty awesome to watch. Uh, not just be damned uh, all of the uh, all of the design choices that might have been made. We're at a place right now where we have an awesome level of tech. Everything from camera quality to uh, smartphone quality, and I'm just I'm enjoying everything right now. I have like six phones on my on my desk right now, and all of them I love at the moment. So like we're in a good place right now. Didn't John Renger just do a video recently that said like tech is magical? And I'm like, it is. 2018 was probably the most magical year, despite all the problems we had. 
Oh, thank you, Josh, for bringing some positivity into this. <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> yeah, I was needed. But I mean, um, I mean, the, the slider came back. The Find Ten brought a motor back to smartphones. Like we're getting creative again. Like that, this is fun. <laughs> like it's fun to see all of this. And, uh, I, and I, I actually have to say a little bit of negativity. I feel bad because the slider finally made a return, but then the hole punch is going to eclipse it immediately. The slider was only around for like four months, and I'm going to be sad to see it go away so quickly. <laughs> Uh, you're going to be sad to see the unibrow go away. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, um, I do agree with you, you know, on that, on that aspect of, look, I, I said it earlier, Chinese manufacturers had a great year. And, and you said it quite well. Um, even though we've heard that, yes, Huawei is doing all the spying, and we have home companies who spy on us regularly. Um, <laughs> Prove the spying so that we know, okay, fine, this is what it is, or tell us what it is, or some some aspects of it, so we can say, okay, why are you doing this? And that's you know, that's that's where that part lies. But um, you know, to the point of innovation, this is where I would say you and Sam differ. You know, you you talked about you know some creativity coming back, and you know, Sam, you talked about the fact that look, let's let's be honest, and I kind of agree with you more, is that look. It's not being creative when, if you think about it, you're basically bringing old things back. You're just, you know, it's like fashion. You're just rehashing a lot of things, right? It's not like you've done anything that's broken ground. If you look at our smartphones today, and like I consider the Mate 20 Pro the best phone this year, it does a lot of things great and well. And my battery just died, I think. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Wow, it says internal temperature high. Wow. <laughs> I mean, this podcast is pretty hot. So somebody, somebody <laughs> was somebody was waking and baking. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Juan, continue. Let me let me sort out my A seven three here. Well, I, well, I, I, I do want to make that. one quick point about creativity. Creativity. While, while he sorts that out. Josh is going to make one quick point here. So I feel <laughs> we throw to Josh. Yeah. The uh, so creativity is uh, it's a very broad term. And I think that sometimes we forget that creativity could very much be taking old concepts and making them current. That's exactly what's been happening this year. So uh, even if we are getting throwbacks, even if we are getting things that may have been part of the lexicon before, the fact that it's becoming relevant in our current state of tech is pretty awesome. And that's what I love about, like, you know, retro, people throw that around like it's some derogatory term. I think that it's actually pretty awesome that, that stuff like that's coming back and it actually works with what, with what we have today. Well, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, that it is a place for things like this. But I also think at the end of the day that, you know, um, the industry in and of itself used to have, you know, almost one new kind of push, one new kind of, you know what, let's just throw everything in the mother and its mother into this particular device. And you used to have one of those every year. Samsung had it in the in the note line for a bit where they would throw everything in its mother into the note, which is why I started liking the note line. But this year, at the cutting edge, everything has been lackluster. It's like, what is the major new technology in phones that we're, we all want to have? We we're all hoping for on-screen fingerprinting. And that kind of just like happened, but it kind mm -hmm. of came in without any major manufacturer really implementing it. Yeah. So we're all looking at 2019 now for it you know where is the promise of this like go anywhere always be connected we're talking about it now but that's not really going to come into fruition probably later 2019 maybe 2020 and if huawei is prevented from basically i mean what i'm saying huawei um yeah if huawei is prevented from basically uh launching a lot of their um a lot of the towers then we're not going to see that for some time so mm -hmm. innovation i think has stagnated a bit We've, we've got some great points here in the chat that I do want to bring up. Sean McCoy, how is the convenience of technology going to advance without some privacy invasion? We're talking about AI, machine learning, and algorithms like that, which I think is a great point. 2018 was another year where I think more consumers joined that conversation. There's no answer, right? We're, we're all going to have to kind of move with technology as we feel comfortable, and companies are going to have to find some type of regulatory action when they abuse their position in uh, trafficking our data. But 
you know, we can't put that genie back in the bottle. I mean, if we want newer, cooler things and we start looking at the Star Trek computer, I think we're all going to be wrestling with those concepts. And then Rihanna Richardson also brings up something, too. Uh, she says, I think it's unrealistic to expect companies to innovate every year. Mm -hmm. So is 2018 just a holding year before we start looking at new products and services? I, I think one of the concerns some of us might share, especially in this room and the collection of phones and tech that we've all been employing this year I don't know that any of us would disagree with that sentiment, but how do we face holding pattern years with price tags that are aggressively rising yeah. for consumers as we start looking at this technological progress? And it's one of the points that I made earlier. Like if you had a phone from 2016, if it was still getting support and you could easily maintenance it, it would still be a perfectly competitive device today. But that's not true. That's not the reality for most people. Most people don't get a four-year-old phone that really gets cutting edge software and is easily repairable with replaceable batteries and upgradable memory and storage and things like that. So how do we reconcile that where we expect companies to occasionally have down years, retooling years, uh, you know, Q, uh, Q and A, uh, QA and uh, uh, sort of experimental years, but then they keep raising the prices on us, even though we didn't feel like that was in line with the improvements that we got so we got to push the software the software has yeah. got to up there it's got to we got to start getting what could be realistic mobile computing uh, i mean we have obviously things like samsung decks that exist but it's it's not like we're seeing too many other people truly compete with that in the way that, that the way that i like to see it especially if you're buying you know phones in a thousand dollar price range that put it's that HP come up with something similar and then it just kind of went away right yeah it's like they kind of come out with their thing and then it just goes away i really think pushing you know if you're going to put out the same iteration of hardware which is maybe a processor or a spec bump up um, similar to what laptops and things do and, and PCs do out there. Well, then let's try to then instead push the software up a little bit better. Let's try to in increase the battery life. Let's try to increase better performance. Let's try to get other things that we can do on our smartphones so we can get it to that. That is your main computing device out there. There isn't any reason why uh, smartphones shouldn't be able to take a huge chunk of the laptop and tablet market in a way if they can put the software on there to fulfill the needs of people like outside of people that are maybe content creators or maybe somebody that needs something of a little bit more power or a little more traditional out there, we should be pushing that boundary to kind of get those things to be better, better experiences and better use of things uh, kind of going forward. I think just spec bumping things occasionally, uh, you know, every year and then just putting out today, you know, mediocre software updates, I think a lot of times it kind of comes out to, isn't going to make, it, it just doesn't maximize the potential that we could possibly possibly be seeing from a lot of these phones. I mean, I think the problem there is that we only have two software manufacturers. You know, somebody, a lot of people stated this, they said, you know, earlier in the chat, they said, uh, the Galaxy Note 9 is cool, but I'm tired of Samsung not having updates. And I keep telling people, the reason Samsung doesn't have updates is that it has a lot of things that Android doesn't have yet. So it's really hard for them to actually throw any of that stuff in there yeah. until they actually fish it out. And, you know, when you have only Apple, of course, with their ecosystem, that's one end, then you've got Android and Google, you know, it was, it was to me, it was a bit surprising when, you know, Google said, hey, we will make our UI compatible for foldable devices. This is like the first time because usually Samsung will do that stuff themselves, you know, just for just a foldable phone. That's usually Samsung's UI. Uh, and then they have to basically run a heavy overlay over Android, which makes those updates slower and slower. Google has to, especially for us Android users, Google has to take that initiative. If you think about it in terms of devices out there, at least major devices that people use, there are only three software manufacturers. Apple, Google, and Microsoft, right? So which is why we don't have that much innovation in software. Well, they've, as all right, should. rant's yeah. coming. They failed, uh, Microsoft failed us in well, so many damn ways with not continuing to continue them in the way they should. And, 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 and really pushing things in the way we should have had it done. Because I'm seeing people talk about eight gigs and 10 gigs of RAM within phones. Well, what good is that if you can't do anything more than what we could simply do with less RAM than that on smartphones. Like I would love to hear that with a Windows 10 phone that has Continuum on it, so that it is the platform that can be both a mobile device and can also be 
also be your your laptop as well too and that was the whole point of that whole thing and that just died itself off and then no one else really outside of Dex, no one else really really wanted to push it further uh right, why you're about to say something in, right. because I, I uh we have a number of questions here and i feel like we should give away a 20 dollar amazon gift card so here's yes how go. i'm gonna ask a trivia question now i need i need the consensus from the group here should it be the first person who replies or should it be a random drawing from everyone who gets the answer correct <laughs> um i say first you gotta be quick Board at work is uh, yeah. Anabong is all about survival of the fittest. What what do you what do you think, Warren? Oh, uh, I guess Warren first Randy. for this one. First for this one, we can first always change it up. One? Yeah. Sam. Sam, Sam you muted. <laughs> you you muted him, I think. No, no, he muted. No, no, I muted oh, myself. Okay. I have my uh, washer going. Um, no, I'll, I'll say first. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll stay with it. So, everyone, get ready. Twenty dollar Amazon gift card. What was? the first handheld portable gaming system to have a color display. Well, not what Anabog is using because it's too high again in temperature. <laughs> 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 All right, let me see. Let me see who actually comes in first on the chat and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see who, uh, who gets that first 20 bucks. Bernie Ingo says Razor. But did my thing die again? <laughs> yeah, it died again. Oh, oh, hey, way to go, champ. Good answers here. No one's gotten it yet. No, no. Everyone's no. like furiously Googling right now. Just... Nope. Yeah. No, no, no. Someone says the cube, the Famicom. What? That is not a handheld portable gaming system, my good sir. Nah, not Game Boy Color Advance. Uh oh, I see it. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That was Lila a good one. Palm got it right. It was, of course, the Atari, the Atari Lynx. Lynx. Yep. You were rocking right. Altered Beasts back in the day. You were rocking Altered Beasts on the Atari Lynx. Thank you very much. I don't know. That was before my time. My first my first color display handheld was a Game Boy Color. Oh. <laughs> I, I lusted over, over the Atari Lynx. I wanted one of those so bad. But Myla, good job. Uh, how you guys want to confirm Myla? Uh, um, Myla, could you? She you, said, said a, you my dad still has his. <laughs> <laughs> that is gone. <laughs> yeah, like your dad's probably a contemporary of mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Myla, if you could, um, if you could tweet any of us, either board at work, some gadget guy, uh, BW one on Twitter. Uh, that's the only way we can confirm. Oh, man, YouTube and messaging. Oh, Jesus Christ! Could be so <laughs> if I could just say, "Hey, here yeah, I mean, go. really, we've got it. We've got to move this off." You guys want to do another one? You want to do one more right now? Because we're we're already an hour into this. Stream. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's move it. Let's be doing another one. What what's what's the next question? Okay, hold on. I'm I'm putting it in the live chat. Okay, well, I'm gonna say for the for the Amazon gift card, let's go with firsts. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going with firsts. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna slow everything down here for just a second. Let the anticipation build. Uh huh. How much RAM did the first commercial Android phone have? I want to see some good answers. You need to tell us what the phone was. You just need to know how much RAM it had. Found the toy. It's like a Game Gear. I love the Game Gear, but no, that's not the. Yeah, I feel bad. I feel bad for people that are like gear. on a time delay. Oh, Master Six Six Six, two gigabytes of RAM. Come on, jeez. Such wish. We're talking about like the Windows Mobile days. Five hundred and thirteen meg. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, Rihanna saying five hundred and twelve gig. <laughs> <laughs> Was like eight kilobytes. Seen it? Ten no, twenty eight no. kilobytes. Oh god. <laughs> no. Oh, Demir Frank is in the live chat. The nitpicker says two fifty six, but it did not have two fifty six. I can't remember, man. Even I can't remember. <laughs> oh, a uh, Shemfe. Shemfe, Shemfe got, it. got it right. One hundred and ninety two megabytes. You had that phone. Ah, yeah, I used to have it. The G one. One. Oh yeah. Was that the one that wouldn't rotate? Oh, that's the other one. The that was the other one. The <laughs> yeah. same, same thing, Shemfei. You've got to try and hit one of us up on the Twitter so that we can get our messaging in place and you can confirm uh, your twenty dollars Amazon gift card. Uh, I mean, we, we were going to do five of them. You you want to do you want to do one more? 
Uh, let, let's throw it out there. Yeah, let's do one more. Okay, let's, let's let's do let's do an easier one, because we 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 made this joke already uh, during during the show. Here, I'm going to put this in the live chat so E can copy it out real quick. You know, since okay. I have the image, we did talk a little politics. We did talk a little a little tech and how our politicians often let us down. And we already <laughs> referenced this quote. So, who is the person who described the internet as a series? Of tubes. Well, now we're about to find out how old these people are. In this we're about story. to find out how people go to Google. That's what we're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy I wasn't there for you all never my first person come in and say Trump. <laughs> I love that. No, he said the cyber. <laughs> no, he, he says cyber. the cyber. The, the cyber. The only one. Oh, that was quick. Oh, no, seriously. I figured this one would be easy. Oh, yeah. Snowmation. That was quick. Snowmation. Yeah. Snowmation. Got it. Yeah, he did. It was Ted Stevens. Ted Stevens. Series of Ted tubes. Stevens described the internet as a series, a series of, tubes. of tubes. So that's three. And uh, Snowmation, again, try and try and hit us up on the interwebs of some kind of messaging system. Oh, Snowmation. That's, that's, such, an age Snowmation. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's such an age question. <laughs> was okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Josh, that's, Josh, that's, that's such an age question. <laughs> Who's, Who's a 90s kid, huh? A 90s kid? Oh, boy. Oh, no, 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 when you went to college. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So we still have people replying to the to the last one. Some people come, coming in with George Steven, Washington? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> and his wooden teeth described the internet as a series of tubes. Okay, so this is coming by way of Josh for another $20 Amazon gift card. <laughs> Number four, right? It's number four. It's you number you four. have to be up on your internet chat lore. So if you were, I don't know, maybe making that move from dial up to DSL and you were jumping on to messaging boards or in some AOL, sort of man. group chat room or something like that. You might have had if, a. Uh, if you were in the middle of a conversation and someone jumped in and wrote out the letters ASL. What were they asking you? Oh, what was the early internet yeah. meaning behind ASL? This is super. This is super if you, pre. You, if you <laughs> answer this, if you answer this question, this means you had a high school kids club account, a oh college, that was easy. college oh. kid college club account. Wow, that was fast. That so was I fast. mean, <laughs> Alpha, yeah. Alpha, uh, Alpha, Alpha got Alpha. it. <laughs> Alpha, just, I mean, just by a hair, beat out Andrew Wallace. It was. Oh, you guys googled were, this. Oh no, there's too many right no, no, over. No, 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 no. no, but they were really quick though. They were. Yeah, really yeah, quick I think I, I think we have some uh, people in their uh, mid to late twenties and early thirties. Yep, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so I, I I have to nerd out on some Trek for the last Amazon gift card. This is one of my favorite Trek. Questions. Oh, let me put it in the live chat so that it can be copied out. Okay, here. Alpha. Uh, <laughs> Make sure to contact us. Sorry. Yeah, Alpha, hook, uh, hook it up. Issues left or right. But anyway, Alpha, uh, tweet us on uh, basically just tweet either Board at Work, um, BW1, or some gadget guys so we can confirm you and we can send you know the gift card to you. And we just did get one of the messages in from Neil. So uh, we have that coming in here right now too. Snowmation. That's you know, funny. YouTube. We went from ASL to WID. WID. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last last uh, Amazon gift card. This this was a fun block of the show. Okay. Last Amazon gift card, and this is a Star Trek question. I'm loading it. This is. We'll oh, say boy. that this is the gift card I'm giving away. Because. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> How many different species? has David Warner portrayed throughout all of Star Trek? I have high such expectations. A, that's such a deep question. Yeah, that is a deep question. I'm already lost. <laughs> I, know, I know there's one person in our chat who should have this on lock. Yeah, one person, I know for four, sure. 428, 4375. I like that it's throwing numbers out to 790. <laughs> So okay. the, the first is is where's Mr. Mobile when you? I was about to say, somewhere, somewhere Michael Fisher is sneezing because we're talking about Star Trek. Right Somebody now. put right. the Mr. Mobile beacon up. So, so the, correct answer, the 
correct answer is three. He was a human in Star Trek V. He was Chancellor Gorkin in Star Trek VI. And he was a Cardassian in the famous Next Gen episode where they tortured Picard. Sword of the Stars got the right number. Um, so we can uh, we can. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know Cardassian. I thought it was four. Was he? He was never a Romulan. I always thought I he was a Romulan. No, I don't think David Warner because David Warner was uh, was a Cardassian. Yeah, I know he was a Cardassian. He was a he, he was a Klingon. He was a Not human. Mix with Cardassian, thought... the other alien species. <laughs> 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 huh, interesting. Like, I would have we'll, we'll, guessed four. We'll, I would have guessed four, it, but I guess it's three. We'll, we'll take it for MVP because we had a number of people saying four, but I had always thought it was three. But I'll, so, I'll look it up right now. No, I'm, I, I just looked it up. I think you're right. <laughs> right now, if it's I, four, it's uh, Harish got it. But if it's three, then Sword of the Stars. Um, is is our pick? Oh, the trackmovie.com kind of says he's been three, so I'm, I'll go with that. Klingon, Cardassian, and um, human. And yeah, he was he, he was never Romulan because he was uh, the voice of the MCP in Tron. That's just another fun piece of uh, <laughs> Harry yeah. said these before. Yeah. End of line. <laughs> Dang. So let's see. Well, Paul Gardner says 2080 is divided by four. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This guy. Wow. I didn't realize we had so many Trekkies on here, man. Uh, yeah. I would never have gotten that. No, it was a good, it was a good one. All right. So that's that's us through the uh the gift cards, yeah. Yeah, the right. gift cards. So 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 far, two people have responded. Um again, just you know, the people who've won, basically sort of the um of the stars um as well as um who else won okay so he's been he's been in star trek four times but he's only played three different species so he's okay. played a klingon a cardassian and a human at least according to imd <laughs> mm -hmm. alpha and um sort of so the... sort, sort sort of the stars you got it you hook it up <laughs> Hit us up on uh, Sword of the Stars is asking, how do I claim the prize? Hit us up on Twitter, Twitter or somewhere where we no post is necessary. <laughs> yeah, just just tweet to board at work, um, BW1 or some gadget guy, and then we will respond. Yep, we got the Twitters up. Yeah, and we'll send that over. Um, it's connected right. by a series of tubes. Oh, but before we get too much further, actually, there was a question that was asked earlier about. Um, privacy and how do we um, we oh, yeah, all how, do, how, do we, how do we reconcile like, yeah. the, the fact that you know a, a lot of our tech has to be convenient so of course it has to learn about us so that's yeah, a privacy so, concern. so it is a privacy concern I get that everyone has their privacy concerns but there are ways that these companies can give us the same services that we have right now without taking personally identifiable data uh, and, and that's the thing. It's it's not just about having our data. It's basically being able to being able to tie our personage to that data. Um, you know, basically being able to remove all your personal identification, uh, personally identifiable information like your address. They don't really need your address. They really need just like a state and um, you know a, a town in a state or a city in a state. Um, they don't code. need exactly even zip code. Would zip code is what but what we're finding is that a lot of times these companies aren't following any guidelines because there really are no laws that explicitly say you know there really were no laws that explicitly said don't use X or don't use Y. Now we're getting these laws coming in at the tail end of this, when we're finding out that for the last maybe four or five years, these companies have already been abusing um, use of personal identifiable data. So this is, this, this is something that I think being a little bit more educated about how um, machine learning works and the kind of data that goes into um, constructing these um, algorithms uh, would help not just our legislators, but also help consumers understand exactly, hey, I'm getting this software for free, I'm giving something back, but I have an expectation that this set of information should be kept safe. Uh, I, I, I think that's that's really where we need to focus on. And yeah, so, and I think the, the, the EU's done that with GDPR, let's sort of exactly. kind of make a step. But GDPR was basically late last year, early this year. It was this year. And, it's, and it's, it started being implemented this year. So yeah, this year, so. Trust me, I'm, I'm fully aware of how that's been working. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of changes with that. But you see, this 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 is the thing about GDPR that really kind of illustrates to me 
why we need better lawmakers. Um, there have been laws that basically govern the identity of consumers and financial institutions. We've had those laws for a while, but no one has raised their hands up. And I think this is this is simply because we have people who are in their dotage right now making laws. Because no one has come out and said, hey, this same thing should apply to, you know, modern social media or any data mining um, initiative. So it's, it's, it's like it's not like the laws don't exist. It's just they haven't been applied to new technology. Good answer, Sam. True story. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, just waiting for more people to respond here. But um, all right, so we've talked about a lot of negatives in 2018, things that kind of pissed us off. Um, I don't want to stay on cell phones, you know, and some YouTubers have done this. Um, what device now besides a cell phone really caught your attention this year? Um, and it could be anything, but what device really caught your attention? You really like to say yes. This happened in well, 2018. We, we, we should get to Josh because he's got to get going soon, and then I'll probably not be too long, too far behind him. All right. Ooh, I've been curious about that. Tell us a little more. Uh, this is called the Aura Ring, and yeah. there are a lot of like smart rings that are coming out. The main ones right now that do uh, some sort of like health tracking are the Aura and the Motive. Yeah. We talked about Michael Fisher earlier. He wears that. And um, okay, here's the thing. This is the this is the the device that I've always been interested in. This is Gen Two. Gen One was like this huge hunking rock, <laughs> like it was just not a good looking ring. And then Gen Two came out, and I scooped it up right away. It is expensive, uh, but what it's 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 mainly it it is the best sleep tracker I've ever used because it measures temperature, heart rate, heart rate variability, a lot of different factors. It has accelerometer in it. It's the most accurate sleep tracker I've ever used, but. Even more than that, what the app tells you is based upon what it finds as you're sleeping, it tells you whether or not you're actually rested up for your upcoming day. And if you're not, it tries to give you tips on how to get uh, better sleep because that's all that's the ultimate goal. Then and this is where this is where uh, my love for this product comes in. It's because it reminded me that you can have like 10 different things tracking your fitness on your body at any given time. If you're not actually doing something with that information, it is an absolute waste of money for you to have a, a, a fitness tracker. And I think the vast majority of people out there have like a Fitbit on or Android Wear doing Google Health or an Apple Watch or anything like that. And they're all like, yo, I did 7,000 steps today, but I still feel like crap. So you're not doing anything with the information that these trackers are giving you, and that's exactly what it has to be done. At least this app is trying to do that for you. So it's it's reminding you what you can do, why you feel the way you feel, and it's trying to make it's actually trying to make you better. But for most people out there, if you have the product, you have to learn what to do with the info you're getting. So this was my that's the reason why I love this thing this year. That's oh man, I'm about to start my ramp on fitness trackers <laughs> I've already heard this year because the one fitness tracker I felt actually provided good information, collected it, and it sort of gave you an advice or gave you a way to sort your data and look at it in a way to improve on it was the Microsoft Band. And my Microsoft mm. Band decided to die this year and because they decided to kill it off before it even it, it even had a chance to really actually exist, I can't track my workouts the way I'd want to. I actually tried using Google Health. That's a piece of junk, to be honest with you, because that that, that will track you. That, that that'll if you're on a train, it'll pretend you're running. I, I just don't get yeah, that. It, 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 is, it, it does this automated thing, and I have to go back and delete things. I said, well, I have to do extra work for this. I'm cutting that off. Fitbits count steps, and that's about the point that they do. But there was nothing else out there that did. No, you tracked your workouts, added guided workouts to the, to your system. You could customize and put workouts on it. You could you track your uh, VO two. You could track your sleep with it as well too. Oh, VO two, nice. Yeah, you know, the band two did uh, VO two. Uh, you could track your sleep with it as well too. There was all these things that this could do in this one little package that you can then manipulate the data accordingly to kind of get a good a good sort of dashboard about your basically your health. Uh, and it, it imported it, and it was real cool, but they decided to kill off the one thing that connected all that because there's no other device, no fitness tracker out there that does that similar thing in so many ways. And do it to a pretty decently accurately well in the way it does. And not 100% accurate, but in most with most fitness trackers, you just stick to a system and just work within that system and don't try to vary sort of out of it. No one's offered that 
since then. They've yeah. just kind of boost up your smartwatch to. Um, Josh, how much is the ring? <laughs> this is uh, okay. I, I'm 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 trying to remember exactly how much it is. Let me double check real quick. Uh oh, it's about uh, to be lots of monies. With a Z. It is <laughs> with monies with a Z. <laughs> it is not. It is not only expensive. It's also coming out of Finland, so it takes a long time to get to you. It's two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Yeah, it's competitive with the motive, really. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, it is. It, I I think it's better than motive. I was supposed to do a review on the motive. I have to reach out to them and say that I will not be doing a review because. I have issues connecting the motive to Android and even connected oh, yeah. to iOS. It doesn't connect, collect my data as well. Um, I and, will admit that the uh, the Aura works best on iOS. I've, I've, I used it on Android for a long time, but then I moved over to iOS to see how it works there. It's definitely more stable. Um, but you know, one final thing, and then I'm going to bow. Thank you so much for having me, by the way. This is awesome. It, despite me having this angle, I'm like talking down to all of you, or, or I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the coolest things about this ring that I'm always going to remember being the best part of the experience is if I'm in the middle of my day and I'm like, I feel like crap today. Like I just don't, I feel like I'm not a hundred percent. I open up the app and it's great when a tracker or a piece of technology confirms your own suspicion. Because if I feel like crap during the day and I look at the app and it says, yeah, last night, like you woke up like three times, you got like no deep sleep and your temperature was high. So you might be getting sick. It's that accurate. When a piece of tech can confirm how you feel and why you feel that way, that's good tech. And that's what this feels like. So yeah. cool. Well, thank good. you very much, man. I appreciate you joining us. I know it was a yeah. bit last minute, but it's all good. It uh, happy, the show. happy New Year to everybody, by the way. Oh, happy New you. Year. Happy New Year to you too. Happy New Year. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll see you in Vegas in about a week. Yes, absolutely. And then you'll also see Isa, but she's knocked out over here. <laughs> it's straight. We had like a big lunch, so she's like food combat over here. So you'll see both of us at CES. All right, man. All right, well, take, take it easy. Man. Take it easy. Later, fellas. All right. Uh, Juan, how about you? Uh, so things that I actually thought did well this year, one of the, uh, one of the industries that I was happiest to see pick up some momentum was VR. Uh, from when we started talking about Oculus and we started looking at all of those demos and what you could do with headsets, we went through, you know, Google Cardboard and Daydream kind of flopping. The market started to chill. PlayStation got in with their offerings. This year, I think we saw legit gaming experiences that were were improved because of VR. It wasn't just VR was a gimmick that you could look around. Um, Beat Saber. I think is one where it's become my ambassador. Like I can I can roll up with a laptop, my my cheap Windows mixed reality headset and put two controllers in someone's hand and it takes minutes before they're engrossed in gameplay. PS4 of of all the games to think that like it's been around forever and you can still do novel things with it, but Tetris effect in VR is the fastest way that you can lose all sense of your corporeal form and you're just moving blocks around just like tetris that we've known for decades or you could take it up to excuse me you could take it up to a game like astrobots where it's a legit platform it's a real good it's one of the best platformers of the year not just well it's a good platformer for a vr experience we, we've we've finally started Developers have finally started tapping what we can really do with this hardware. And I think now we've got better, better experiences to translate. So it's a little less of the chicken and the egg problem that we used to have. You could get this amazing headset, but then what could you do with it? Now you can do some really cool things with it. And uh, I, I think it's starting to touch on the various and the broad industries that we can look at. Like, you know, my wife and I played so much Beat Saber, we were actually like maxing out all of our fitness tracker scores while we were playing that game just like it got our heart rate up it got us moving we were faking our step counts because you're moving your arms around so much um th that that to me was one of the happier trends this year so as we're getting into another generation of crazy powerful and super expensive gpus we're, we're finally going to be looking at wireless options for some of these vr headsets now is the pivot point where i think uh, manufacturers and developers can start making a better argument for VR as an activity, as a service. All right, cool. Um, Warren, what about you? Um, I think what was cool, and this is probably gonna be more for people that work in what we do, 
has been uh, people, uh, has been companies like Sony and like the A7 III and seeing the competition in that full frame space really start to heat up with uh, different offerings out there, one from Canon and uh, one from Nikon that also surprised a lot of people as well too. I was really kind of excited to kind of see sort of that take off where we're seeing full frame cameras with 4K video at a good price, give such great quality with it. And then there's all the competitors that are in that mix um, as well too. So it's made me pretty excited for where it's the camera technology sort of going forward in, in, in that space. Um, outside of that, I would say um, uh, it's tough to say because I don't really have too much more that I like. And then, like I, I kind of go back to where I said it was a bit of a boring year. There are some things that were just a little bit boring to me outside of the, those couple of things. I don't think anything else. I'm sorry to be negative, but it's just, I don't think nothing else really hey, jumps hey, out. I, me. I, I, I stop. Just stop. Just you, you, jump eight, seven, three. Let's just cut it there. It just doesn't we jump. Had a streak. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> It's all right, you can be happy about something. A73 is cool. I know you like it. I know you like it. Sam, how about you? Um, it's kind of weird, but I'm gonna go with the, uh, the Amazon uh, Alexa smart speakers. Uh, just smart speakers in general. I'm gonna go with that. Uh, it, it's really amazing that uh, normally when I go on Christmas, uh, to Christmas vacation and I'm meeting up with family, I'm the one giving out the tech. But this time around, I, I got a, uh, you know, one of the smaller Alexa's um, speakers in my, um, as a stuck in stuffer. And that totally blew me away because it's like, I got one of those and uh, smart plugs. And it's just amazing how the proliferation of this technology has, has gone out there. Like everyone is aware of it. Everyone uses it in some form. Um, either you have the lights or you use Amazon with your um, you know, shopping list. Or in some way, it's integrated into our lives. And I, it's just really amazing to be in that future already where we do use smart assistant. And everyone just you know takes it as commonplace. I think that to me, 2018 was a year of uh, smart assistants and smart speakers becoming commonplace. Okay, cool. I guess that leaves me. I would have said the A7 III, but you took that away from me, Warren. So his backup is the Apple AirPods. All Ooh. right, end of show, guys. Are you trying to slap me in the face? Those I, I was going to see if I could if I could actually capture an aneurysm on camera. So <laughs> <laughs> like we could lock that those up. Those things are so it. crappy. They should sell subscription service too for how many times you have to replace those damn things. <laughs> right, my <laughs> transaction, your hardware there? Yeah, yeah. might as well. No, I mean, I mean, for me, I mean, I'll go with the Sony um, W1000 Mark Threes. These are the first um, wireless headphones that the sound quality, at least for me, the sound quality really hit that mark. Where I said, um, "Yeah, he <laughs> 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 your internal temperature is too hot." <laughs> but, but I mean, no, seriously, to, to your point, E, it's it's not also uh, it, like. For, for as much as we might get snobby about certain things like Kodak's, LDAC ain't nothing to fuck with. Um, I just did a, a round robin and a blind taste test on a receiver unit that can do APTX HD and LDAC. And LDAC yeah. And it's, it is surprising what we can do wirelessly. Uh, yeah. So especially with Sony taking the lead on that and then giving it to Android, right? So like all Android phones now just have LDAC support. That's pretty hot. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely, I definitely like that, and I, and I like what's coming in that wireless space. Um, you know, like I just saw what what Qualcomm is doing with the Abtex adaptive, which is something that I didn't know that. I mean, I knew it was an issue, but I didn't realize that they could solve the issue. So you, um, I was, I've always had this issue with a lot of smartphones that connect via Bluetooth. If I start moving it, if I'm moving from my back pocket to my front, I start getting some signal loss or just a little break in, in you know, signal de de degradation. And this allows for consistent signal and actually will push high res audio on even lower frequencies as well, which to me actually was amazing. So it says there's a lot coming forward for wireless audio, which is good. But I loved what Sony did this year because I think they really set the mark for good true wireless noise canceling headphones which um you know something you know we've all been hunting for you know the headphone jack is going away and all that stuff so yeah. um i i definitely give them props for that because at least that to me is like is a bright spot in audio 
uh, yeah, there. And that's nothing to sleep on, saying it's like only one company has dominated that market for how long, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, with Bose, yeah, you know, so yeah. so it's it, it was a good thing to see. It was a good thing to see. Yeah, we have um, um, two things left, <laughs> but I'm gonna have to let you guys give those away. I actually need to get ready for some dinner plans, and I can hear mommy daughter strife happening. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta got go jump in there, but I'll take care of one of the gift cards. In fact, I just got a tweet from uh, from Gemface, so I'm gonna send him his gift card. You guys can sort out these last couple gift cards and uh just want to say gentlemen it's been a pleasure yep. producing this show and joining you on this show the years that we've done the board at work weekly this way this has been one of the things that i always look forward to during uh at the end of the week so i hope we'll get some conversation and some people in comments talking about what what would make sense for us because it's, it's not so much that we're wanting to give up on this collaboration it's we want to find what the next version of this or what the next step of this is. And I'm really excited to see what we'll be able to work together on in 2019. So Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy new year. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing some more cool stuff with you guys right soon. All right, man. Uh, Take care, care and uh, enjoy time with fam. Yeah, we'll do guys. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. As um, as Juan said, yeah, we are ending the video segment of the weekly for now, uh, and we're looking for ways to to move this forward. So, we would love to hear your thoughts on that um, as well to see what you guys uh, guys actually think. So, we need to come up with a question <clears throat> for our next two prizes. We've got the um, uh, Overwatch headset, Razer headset left, and the final prize. Would be Poco phone. So um, we'll, we'll discuss that there in the in the in our little chat section here, so we can come up with some questions. But uh, while we're at it, um, what do you guys hope to see in 2019 um, in, in terms of tech? We know that you know smartphones notches will probably go away into and you know will lend itself into punch holes. Um, we know foldable devices are coming. Uh, we know that uh, foldable displays are on the horizon. What what do you want to see, or what do you expect as well? I'll start with you, Mark. Um, for hold on, I was kind of a little bit distracted. <laughs> I was typing, trying to I was trying to create a poll real quick. But like, um, it, it, I'm assuming the question was 2019. 2019. 2019. Yeah. <sighs> 2019. It's outside. You know, the big thing I think the talk will be. Uh, in the smartphone category will be uh, punch hole uh, displays and on-screen fingerprint uh, sensors were going to be the two big things I think will be happening along with 5G. So I'm really excited to see a push of pretty much all that tech in the uh, in the smartphone space, seeing where sort of that is going to uh, lead us towards. I'm really interested to see 5G and really where we're headed with that and seeing these devices come out and, and, and really take things to the next level of, of that always connected, always sort of um, and always connected with fast speeds and stuff like that. I'm really excited for that. Um, other than that, I'm just taking the year to see what sort of comes around. I'm really, I think maybe the one thing I'm probably really looking forward to is better software innovations on smartphones and, and better services that are coming up hopefully in the next year. Uh, sorry, um, Sam. How about you, <laughs> Lord? Um, I'm actually looking forward more to Google <clears throat> maybe rolling out its solution for automated call answering to um, all Android phones and not just Pixel, because I think it's something very useful, especially now that robocalls make picking up your phone now uh, very tedious. Right. We get so many robocalls every day. And to be able to have uh, an automated answering service that literally just like shuts that down would really make people we, we, we might make phone calls useful again or might make our, make our phones a little more useful, or a little less annoying. So that's really what I'm looking forward to. I'm, I, I want to see if Google can do this and if it can take it past the pixel and just put it into Android. OK. Um, yeah, this this sound this sound pretty cool. Uh, people have mentioned a couple of things. Somebody, Mark Ferguson says, graphene batteries in twenty nineteen. They've been promising that for a while, man. Yeah, be awesome. 
Yeah. I mean, I mean, battery life and uh, is is always key with smartphones. You know, we this is the year. Twenty eighteen was the year we got to four thousand milliamps on a lot of phones. I mean, it's always been there with you know s certain devices, but. Uh, a lot of your key devices were getting close to that 4,000 milliamp battery range, you know, even with the May 20 Pro doing 4,200. Uh, and you can tell what kind of battery life it does with that kind of stuff. But that's actually pretty cool. I would say, um, I mean, for me, it's um, it's what that 5G promises and how quick this rollout is. The the what, the reason why I'm a little bit more excited, you know, some people have said, well, kind of like the 4G rollout, what are we going to see that's different? The, my excitement is that at least on the speed side of things, it's not going to be like 4G where we pro we're promised super speeds, right? And then it just dropped down to edge, which is terrible. You know, okay. at least with 5G, if it drops down, you're just you're, you're going down to at least what we have right now, which is not bad. In the first place. Um, but it's the promise of what that can do with um, automation, can do with cars. You know, one of the things that uh, I do you not know, seen when I uh, I went to Qualcomm's 5G day. They they were pushing with with uh, automotives. Is look, we want every car to have 5G so that vehicles can talk to each other. And the demo they had that was really simple was, hey, look, you don't have to have an autonomous car. You don't have to have every car to just be like a Tesla. But your car should be able to communicate with everything on the road, aka the cars in front, the car in front of that, the street lights. You know the things that can be connected around the road so that. If you're trying, if you're on a single lane road and you're trying to overtake a truck, the car in front of the truck, all the truck will tell you there's a car coming. So even if you want to do, your car stops you from making that. You know, something very simple, and you know, it may sound trivial, but to me, I think it's really important for road safety because we don't necessarily, at least at this point, doesn't mean that we need to fully have autonomous cars like you know what tesla was initially trying to push but we need to have smarter vehicles you know something that can help us and aid us and it's not also just left to the bmws and the mercedes that cost 100 grand right <laughs> that can come down to your your cheaper hondas and your toyotas and your chevys and things like that so that i'm i'm excited to see how that at least you know starts moving out in uh in 2018. Uh. And um, yeah, okay, we've got our first question. So, um, oh. Enough right. first, question, first question for the headset <laughs> no. giveaway here. I apologize for the first question. Um, this one is very simple, and you should know it. And we'll still go with the first answer. Uh, what was, what is the date of birth of Steve Jobs? If you can Google quick or your uh, Google Assistant or Alexa can help you out, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> wow, it's taking people some time. I was expecting the past answers. I uh, thought <laughs> so we just put the Google link in. <laughs> no, that's me. No, I'm, I'm dro no, I dropped in a bit of a survey about the show. Wow. If I can kind of give their input as to what we want to evolve this to. Uh, yeah. It's, that's uh, Daniel Mallow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Daniel Mallow. All right, Daniel Mallow, congratulations. You just won yourself a gaming headset. This is uh, a Razer is. headset. So congratulations, Daniel. Uh, hit us up on um, on Twitter because that's the only way you can contact us <laughs> uh, so that I can actually send you a prize. But yeah, and also, yeah, Warren just dropped the survey. Definitely let us know what you'd like us to do. I'll also leave it in the description of the video so you guys, if you're watching it later, you can actually check that out as yeah. well uh, in there. But um, but yeah, um, anything else you guys want to see in 2019 before I give away the last, the last prize right here? It's a Poco phone right here. The phone that that change a lot of people's mindsets about cheap phones from Xiaomi. Then again, this is one thing I liked about Xiaomi though. Their company only takes in 10% of their profits. That's supposedly that's what they say. At least that's their company model. And um, But I realized what Xiaomi does and why they're able to do it is that they partner with so many smaller companies in China. Um, um, because I went to one of the events and I met, they announced like a projector. I was like, okay, of course, Every Chinese company has makes so many things, and like, oh no, yeah. we don't make it. It's this guy. This is the this is the president of the company. Um, they make it. Xiaomi is basically the company that does. It. They basically take the um, the gaming model, 
right? But oh, they're, uh, label, they're, they're just a publisher. Yeah, publisher, yeah, yeah. They're the publisher and then they're the developers out there. And they're like, yeah, we, so it was interesting to see that um, uh, from them. And, you know, they want to make that big push into 20, 2019 to the US if they can uh, with their devices in there. But yeah, guys, anything else you guys want to see um, uh, for 2019? On the, so on the, on the legislation and also software side, because we talk about hardware here for a second. There's quite a lot I would like to see. Um, I would like to see, you know, uh, something similar to GDPR for the U.S. as well. Um, something that our uh, our legislation or our our uh, Congress can actually put out there that is meaningful, right? Something similar to the like the right to be forgotten. Um, I would like to see people have more access to the information that Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, all these other companies um, have on them. Uh, I would like to, to see uh, the ability to basically be able to pick what information you want to share across all platforms, and then um, pick what information you'd like to delete and stop marketers from using. Uh, because yes, uh, as much as we can have, um, you know, uh, as much as we can have selective data used, or we can have non-personal identifiable uh, data used, there's so much data that's out there already. It would be nice to have a report or to have a site we can go to and see all the data that's available. And from that one site, delete um, what we need or correct what we need to uh, to have corrected. And I, I think this should be a legislative push, very similar to how we are allowed to have uh, our credit score, where we can go and request it from a, um, we can go and request it from one of the, the three credit bureaus. We should be able to go to any social media company and request our um, social media uh, data, I would say. Can't hear you. I said, that's pretty cool. And also a lot of wishful thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, I was like, you that, like that. fries with that, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, it would be nice, but also again, I guess you know, in a sense, it creates a. So my thing, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people not understand, is the way America solves problems is it creates industries. That's what America does, right? That's a new industry you just described. You know, like the uh, like the credit agency industry. The credit industry was like solution yeah. to that. Yeah, so that's that's what you do in the U.S. and that's something that you know, hey, will will help because. As as social media continues to grow in our lives, you know, like I think you said this very well, Sam. We as humans now have two lives. We've got our you know our regular physical lives, and we've got a, a digital life that we have to manage. Yeah. We've always had that with credit scores, but it was so murky and like for credit scores the, were a mystery until the internet came around. Yeah. So with this now, we definitely need that kind of stuff. So that's that's. I hope so, man. But I don't think it's gonna happen in twenty nineteen. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm hopeful because, uh, as we all know, there was a recent election in the United States, and twenty nineteen is going to be the year where a lot of these younger congressmen and women come in to um, basically start their uh, tenure in Congress, and there are quite a lot of young people there who are doing things. I'm not saying young as in you know. Um, 20s, maybe one or two of them are in their 20s, but um, they are young as in like 30s, 40s, people who use this kind of technology in everyday life and don't, and don't have to go, hey, can you print me out that email, you know? Print the internet. <laughs> yeah, print the internet. So I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe this doesn't happen in 2019, but I think the discussion for this might start in a year where we have so, so many young people coming have, into the legislature. We have a lot of people that are coming in that are from the later Gen X era, now first millennials coming in to the space. And it's really cool to kind of see a, a lot of us finally getting into politics in the way we in, in, into this space. Many of us are now at the, at the of age we can actually run for president. <laughs> We're just kind of getting, I just turned the age to get to that, to, to be able to get to that. So it's kind of cool when you think about those things that we're starting to get involved. And in. what I like is, is that I feel like we're getting involved at a much earlier age now than, than, than a lot of other, other generations do. 
So, so I think by seeing that, I think in 2019, we're going to see more of us jump into here and 2020, I think might be a crazy wildfire with the way things, with, with, with the way things might be around that time. But to see that come in is really going to cause for all these changes because the biggest thing that needs to happen um, is the start in talks of holding the FANG companies accountable and providing legislation against them to, to one, prevent monopolies from happening, to prevent them from controlling everything within our tech space, basically, at this point, and, re- uh, and, 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 and if needed, breaking them up because we had no problem doing that to Microsoft when that ha- when that when I went down, and we had no problem doing it to Mar Bell back in the day. I think we, I think you know, uh, Facebook, Amazon, Google, Apple. Uh, I guess Netflix is in that space as well too. There, there needs to be some thoughts and discussions of is it really good that all these companies are together like this and really look at you know setting some hard rules and guidelines and not allowing the lobbying which they lobby extremely hard for to, to prevent those things from sort of happening because it could get to a point where they, you know, they, they could be controlling data at a, at a rate that's very uncomfortable and could be, you know, they could easily implement a system similar to what they're doing. What is that? What are they doing in China that, uh, in ratings, social, social, currency. social yeah. currency, the social <laughs> index. Yeah. yeah. That's not a, a, a good thing in any regards to sort of sort of have out there and we don't want these companies pushing these in a way without some type of uh rules instruction regulation in there with it regulation is not a bad thing it protects uh, it protects a lot of people yeah all right let's get to our last prize which is the pocophone f1 yeah so you can win this prize now, the Poco F1, just to give you some breakdown, it has a Snapdragon 845 processor. It's running uh, latest version of Android, close to a stock experience. Um, this phone, though, does not work in the US. So just stating that clearly, if you don't know, but I'm sure a lot of you do know. But here's my question for you guys out there. Uh, this is going back to, of course, the first Android phone. Of course, as you know. Internal temperature high. Allow it to cool. Um, that, should, that should just be the 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 tagline of this. I, I don't know. Something cool. is something is wrong with my A73, which is it's doing this. So I, I've got to figure out what it is. But um, the HTC G1, which is the very first Android smartphone, when did it launch, and what carrier was it on? Oh, what's the question? Okay, this should, that's the question. This, this should be answered within the first like message. You all are nerds. <laughs> I'm expecting high, high things. I, I also oh. need. I also need the month and date. Sorry, month and date, month and date, month and date, month and date. Some of you got part of it. <laughs> Some of you, 2002, really. <laughs> uh come on, guys, get in closer. Come on. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. I think. I think. Oh, no, we'll no, the- no, 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 no. I think Myla might have it. Actually, uh, uh, no. <laughs> I need month, date, and carrier. Oh, there we go. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad yeah. Ali. Yeah. Muhammad Ali. That is yeah. a great name. Uh, <laughs> does he have carrier, though? Uh, he does. I think he does. Oh, no. He doesn't have carrier. Muhammad Ali. Uh, I kind of blew it there. <laughs> <laughs> This is like Jeopardy people. I know, right? Put it together, have- folks. Oh. Put it together, folks. You're like, like, put it together. You have to Come have on. everything. The first one to have everything. There we go. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Myla got it. My- Myla-, Myla can't win again, can can they? I don't know. That's up to the board at work team. Yeah. <laughs> and then Mohammed hit it again. <laughs> and then where 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 the hell did he go? <laughs> He vanished, man. Sorry, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. All right, I'm gonna let you put the ruling in on this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, wow. I mean, no, we have to. Okay, look, let's let's all congregate for a second, guys. Hey, hey, Come you can't guys. you can't share the blame around. This is all you. This is all on you. 
<laughs> Don't bring us into this. It, it got really heated real fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People were getting it wrong, and um, People were getting pieces. And yeah, pieces. Right. We, 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 so I'm just looking at it again. Who, who got it right all the way through? Just to make sure. Benji was, Benny was close, said October 20th. That was not the case. Hold on one second, guys. Hold on. Sorry. All right. Somebody said Warren for president. Yeah. Yeah. Warren should run for president. I got, I'll got. i get all my scams and scandals out early. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll run right. on that platform and completely win. <laughs> Just work on my charisma. Make up nice catchphrases. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, so did we decide on, on, on who? <laughs> no, 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 don't put that on us. <laughs> you... uh, okay. So, Milo Pam was October twenty second, two thousand T Mobile, and I, you know, Mila, you did win the gift card. I'll have to give it to. Hold on one second. Uh, what? Oh, okay. Go, go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, no, no. What are you going to say? No, I thought someone else did it earlier, but it was a, it was a, it was wrong. It didn't have the whole thing. I, I, Sorry. Go ahead. Curtis Shaw, I yeah. Think it's Curtis Shaw, to him. yeah, yeah. Curtis Shaw, I know, I know, I know. All right, <laughs> Curtis Shaw won. Yeah, Mohammed just got beat out of that. Sorry like, about that, Mohammed. Uh, uh, you were, you were, you were close. You were, you were close. You were close. Thanks, but thank you for the endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, I know you can't see me because my camera died there for a second. Uh, but you won the po uh, the poker phone credit show, so hit me up on Twitter, and I'll try and uh, and um, and I'll answer and send that to you all the information to you, so we can ship it out to you. All right, that is it, guys. Uh, that was the show. It, we went pretty long today, uh, which is our usual fashion, which is great. Uh, I want to thank everyone who has supported us for the last what five years. We've been doing the weekly. Um, uh, it's been great. It's been fun. Uh, I'm going to leave a link for you guys again for the survey that uh, um, Warren just put up. Uh, let us know what you think we should do for the show, how we should actually move forward. Do it as a podcast? Should we actually post it as a non-live show? Or do you have any other options that we can try, that we can do? So uh, it'll be cool to hear from you uh, you guys about that so we can move forward in 2019 because we want to keep doing this. Yeah, we like doing this, guys. And we really just but we want to make sure it's in a way that it, it reaches out to everyone and, and 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 it really becomes a thing that everybody can enjoy and we can produce yeah or oh, even wow. maybe maybe if we cut it to a monthly show again thoughts so just put it out there for us so there was one there was one vote for that in the other section so. yeah so, so so let us know um want to thank uh i'll add that as a response so uh, I want to thank um Juan Bagnell I know he's not here um you know for uh, just you know Waking up early in the West Coast to do the show <laughs> on Saturdays and, uh, you know, uh, just putting all the effort in there. I also want to thank Warren for, you know, for coming in and, you know, bringing all his his really strong energy, and, you know, rant energy in there. And and Sam for, you know, trying to pretend to be level-headed. But... <laughs> <laughs> pretend. <laughs> but... But I want to thank you guys a lot for just, you know, doing this for five years. I didn't think we were actually going to do it this long. I didn't know it was going to last this long. Um, but it's not the end, guys. Uh, so I just want to say thank you very much. It's been, it's been great doing this with you, hearing your opinions and hearing sides of things that I didn't think, um, you know, we would have such a good conversation. So um, thank you very much. And also, guys... I appreciate you tuning in every weekend when we used to do start. I think we started off at like 9 a.m. initially. No, it was uh, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Uh, 11 a.m. Yeah. Then we moved to 12 noon. And then this year we moved to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. So thank you very much for supporting us, leaving comments, uh, um, you know, answering questions and all that fun stuff. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's it, guys. Hopefully you have a, uh, a great 2019 moving forward but don't forget to check out all the channels check out mr juan bagnell on some gadget guy on youtube instagram twitter facebook also check out mr warren bowman on uh, bw1.com youtube twitter instagram facebook and, and everywhere else on the web and uh sam aka black iron underscore man that is his twitter handle and also his instagram handle as well 
Uh, you can follow him on both networks. And for us, it is Border Work on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, as well as our website. Uh, thank you for your support. Leave your thoughts on what we should do and have a great 2019. Bam.